Well, let's define healthcare consumerism, because I said it's not consumer-driven healthcare. <clears throat> That's a subset of healthcare consumerism. So here's the definition that the Institute has adopted. And I'll read it because there's some important words that are in here and there's some important words that are not in here. Healthcare consumerism is about transforming a health benefit plan in the one that puts economic and purchasing power and decision making in the hands of participants. It's about supplying the information and decision support tools they need along with financial incentives, rewards and other benefits that encourage personal involvement in altering health and healthcare purchasing behaviors. Key words, health and health care. So it's not just a health care approach. It's health and health care. And also notice it doesn't say anything about account-based plans. It's much broader than that in its own definition. Because I'm sure you've seen those TV programs. The guy's sitting there with the rocks over his head and the rocks are shrinking, vanishing deductible on property and casualty auto insurance. There's no reason that you can't reward and incentivize people with lowering the deductible if they're doing the right thing. There's no reason you can't reward and incentivize people by changing their employee contribution percentage to the plan. There's all sorts of ways you can reward and incentivize people. Account-based plans are great, and I highly recommend them. And that's one way to reward, but it's not the only way. So that's we want to be sure everybody has those broad uh, concepts and ideas. Two other basic principles around healthcare consumerism, and I feel really strongly about these that whatever program you put in must work for the sickest in your organization. You know, the early criticisms of the consumer-driven healthcare was that it was only for the young and the healthy and the wealthy. If that's what you're approaching, that's who your program is for, it'll fail. It has to work for the sickest. It ought to be a program that rewards and incentivizes even chronic and persistent conditions so that they're stabilized, so that you have a healthy workforce, that you're caring about the people that are out there to actually get better. And if you stabilize a diabetic, you'll have a whole lot less cost than if you don't stabilize them, if they don't change their lifestyle, if you don't give them the, the information, the support, actually change both their, their medical care, be sure they're being treated, as well as lifestyle changes. The second item that's a basic principle is that this must work for people who want to get involved in their health care decision making in detail and those who don't. For example, somebody doesn't want to get on the internet. They don't want to check what the lowest cost prescription drug is. That's fine. They may have better things to do. They may have just made a sale for a million dollar commission. They, didn't, they make more money that way than going on and saving a few bucks on prescription drugs. They may have had a family member that needed help. They may need to go visit their, their mother or spend time with their kids. That was more important than finding the least expensive medication. That's fine. At the end of the day, they might wind up spending more on health care, but that was their choice. So they don't have to get involved if, you're, if you don't want to. But they won't lose their, their home, they won't go bankrupt, they won't lose their kids' educational funds. So there are protections in the right kind of a program for anybody that doesn't want to get involved in all the details. 